Hi, this is Dr. Eric Dine with Room Now, checking in from day two of ULAR. We had an excellent session this morning looking at treatment options for lupus, uh, active lupus, nephritis, arthritis, and skin disease. Talked about a variety of, of new medications um, that can change the landscape of lupus treatment. I'm gonna talk about three medications today and the trials that were presented associated with them. The first trial I'm gonna talk about is oral presentation 0129, looking at belumumab after rituximab. Uh, studying whether it can reduce anti-double-stranded DNA, IgG, and prolong time to severe flare in lupus nephritis. In this study, they looked at administering Blumab after giving rituximab. So rituximab itself, um, obviously controversial for the treatment of lupus nephritis in that um, it's been something that's been used frequently, seems to have a good effect for many providers, but the real world data in the lunar trial uh, had trouble showing uh, statistical significance. Um, they have noted that rising bath levels after rituximab has correlated with disease flares. So the idea of this study is to administer belumumab, which is anti-bath, um, to uh, try to prevent that from happening and keep double shaman DNA low in patients with lupus nephritis following their rituximab infusions. So this, this study looked at 52 patients that were recruited all patients in the study received rituximab infusions twice, um, and then four to eight weeks after their first rituximab, they were randomized to receive either belumumab or placebo plus standard of care for both of them. There's no restrictions on the patients coming into the study on immunosuppression or, or the amount of prednisone they were on. Um, they seem to be at about um, 13 or 14 milligrams on average of prednisone in the study. Patients came from across England. There are 16 centers in England that were part of this trial. 81% female as uh, per the, the lupus demographics, uh, only about 12% of black ethnicity in the trial. Um, the primary endpoint was looking at anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies, IgG, uh, and they met that at all time points, including the primary endpoint, which was at 52 weeks. Uh, they also noted that there was an increase in time to the first severe lupus nephritis flare of BILAC A. Uh, this was statistically significant. Um, which was you know, a very impressive finding given the low number of patients in the study. Uh, There's a trend towards um, uh, increased time until first moderate or severe by like A or, or to B flare. Uh, so this was a trend towards significance, but didn't quite make it. Um, and both arms had, were able to decrease prednisone over the course of the study, but there's no difference between those groups. Adverse events were also similar between the two groups. Uh, so I, I think this is, um, a very interesting study of pairing rituximab with bilimumab uh, as a treatment for refractory lupus nephritis. Uh, I think it's something that makes a lot of um, biologic plausibility uh, from a mechanistic standpoint. Uh, and I think it's something that we need some more data looking at rituximab as well as rituximab bilimumab pairing for this possible disease. Next, I'm gonna talk about um, anaphrolimab, uh, which is our human monoclonal antibody to type one interferon. Dr. Merrill talked about this in oral presentation 0131. Uh, and they looked at rash and arthritis effects of anaphrolimab. Uh, these were pooled data from the two phase three trials, TULIP-1 and TULIP-2. Uh, and she showed that there was improvement of rash and arthritis on anaphrolimab. And I thought the interesting uh, finding here that, that was discussed in the TULIP trials were that it was the patients with high interferon um, signatures that particularly responded. So showing that anaphrolimab could be a good agent at interfering um, interferon and, um, and leading to benefit of uh, musculoskeletal and cutaneous disease for lupus, particularly in that subset of patients that have high interferon. Finally, I'm going to talk about a study of a phase two trial. This is I, um, Iberdamide that uh, Dr. Worth talked about in presentation 0132. Um, Iberdamide is a high affinity uh, cerebron ligand that promotes proteasomal degradation of Icarus and Ilos. Those are transcription factors of immune cell development and homeostasis that are linked to SLE. Iberdamide has been shown to reduce the activity of B cells and type one interferon pathways. Uh, they tested three doses of iberdamide at 0 0.15 milligrams, uh, 0 0.3 and 0 0.45, 0 0.45 milligrams daily dosing of iberdamide. 
uh, and they tested that versus placebo. Uh, skipping ahead to the results, looking at the class A50 scores, uh, there's no difference um, between the doses of the ibirdamide between the low, moderate, and, and the high doses. Um, but they did show comparing that the high doses of I ibirdamide versus placebo, that there was a um, statistical significance in subacute cutaneous lupus and chronic cutaneous lupus. This was not seen for acute cutaneous lupus, but there was findings as early as week four with continuous improvement to the end of the study at week 24. So again, this is another encouraging finding that this could be another potential avenue or pathway in the treatment of lupus. So in summary, I think there's three uh, excellent presentations that talked about these three different medications. I'm looking forward to seeing more studies and more to come out about each of them as potential new treatments for us. Thank you very much. This is Eric Dine from Room Now. I'll be here throughout ULR meeting, checking back in with updates. Thank you.